good evening in this video i am explaining about how to create a project in the hyperlink query language so in this case first i am create i have created first i have created a project with name college okay under this project I have created one package. The package name is the student. So first I have to create the package. Uh, sorry, first I have to create the project. Then I have to create the package. So then I have to create three files under the package. The first one is the student class. Second one is the hibernate mapping class. Third one is the main class. So here my main class is this one. Forget about the remaining two one. The main class is HQL main menu. So you have considered only these three classes. First one, student class, mapping class, and the HCL main menu class. Okay, when you see this one, you can observe that clearly. HQL main menu class, student class, and uh, mapping class are three are under the student package. It should be in the proper way. Then the hibernate configuration file must be under the source. Remember once again, the main program, which we can call as a HQL main menu, student class and student mapping class, mapping XML file. These three must be at the student package. And the hibernate configuration file must be under the source. Okay. I think you have that clear. So once you have created create that one, then go to the project here. Click, right click on the project. And go to the build path and go to the configuration build path. In the configuration build path, you can able to see the class, class path here. So when you see the libraries, libraries we have these files. Okay. Generally, when you create a new project, these files will not be available. So then what you have to do is you have to click on the external jars. Then you have to select the files where they are available, okay? So what you have to do here, you have to click on the, right click on the project name, go to the build path and configure build path, you get a window. Under the libraries, you have to add, click on the add external jars. Then you will ask for the path. Then you have to choose where my jar files exist. So see here in my, the, my, my programs, I have place in the, this one, this Java project underscore, the hyper nursery, the required jars here, there. So I will, I have copied these jars. Likewise, you can able to copy those jars. So if the, if the task is completed, then you have to press on apply and close. So now what happened? You have created, so see, whenever you click on okay, you will, you can able to see all the jars here. So you can able to see MySQL connector also. So these remaining all, jars or belong to the hibernate and this is belongs to the mysql connector so now it's clear that you have created two classes hql main menu class and student class under the student package and hibernate mapping class under the student package and the hibernate configuration class configuration mapping file under the source okay it's clear and then you have created and added all the jar files. So how do this one? Click on, right click on the college, project name, build path, configure build path, and go to the libraries, click on the external jars, and select these files where they are available. Okay, then click on OK, automatically they will add. So once they are listed here, then you have to click on the apply and close. So up to this point, what you did is, you have created the classes, you have created the hibernate mapping and you have created the configuration file. 
but there is no content inside. Everything are blank. Then what you have to do? First, you have to create the data, insert the data into the student class. So you here, see here, this is the code that I have written in the student class. So you have to write all this code into the student class. So what is the purpose of this class? If you want to create object, you can able to create the object with the help of this class. What do you need to create the object? If you want to insert the data into the tables, you can't insert directly. You have to you need to take the help of the objects. With the help of the objects, I can collect the data and I can able to insert in the database. Okay. So you have to clear this one. This class we can also call as a POSO class. Next, go to the Hibernate mapping file, which have the name, same name as the class name. Right click on it and open with the text editor. Then you have to copy the code which I have given in the Word, Word document here. In this, you can able to understand that what is the package name. The package name is the student here. And what is the class name? It's a student class here. And what is the table name? The table I have created in the database, that name. So now here I'm specifying that what is the column name in the class and also the column name in the table. So this is the right side is belongs to the table data, table attributes, and left side belongs to the class attributes. Okay. So now here the class attribute SID is mapping with the table attribute SID. So likewise, we are mapping all the remaining also. So this is a concept of mapping. In this what we are telling is we are going to specify the package name, class name, table name, and class properties and table properties. Okay. So now go to the configuration file. Again, open with the text editor. You can able to see this one. Here, under this one, in the first line, we have mentioned the driver name, MySQL driver. Next one here, the database name. Here, my database name is MNR. What are the database you have created? You have to mention the database name. Then the username by default will be SQL is the root. And the password can be the password which you have given in the data SQL creation at the time of creation of the SQL. Okay. Instead of SQL. So now finally, here we have one option that is called the mapping resources. What indicates it means what is the path of the mapping file? So where we have created the mapping file, we have created the mapping file under the student package. So you have to specify the first package name slash the file name. The package name is the students slash student.hbm.xml. So what I am doing up to this point, the database will be connected. After the connecting, my database is connecting whatever the database I have connected, the database is mapping with the class. So this is a simple concept here. Next, we understood that the POJO class, mapping file, and configuration file. Now we'll move to the SQL main menu. So in this one, what you have to do is, as you discussed earlier, we have to create the configuration object and service registry object. And we have to create the sessions and we have to open the section and the section will be attached to the transaction. So when you execute of this point, we are giving a menu that the menu indicates that there are six options. If you specify one, what will happen is, it will fetch the records from the table, database table, and will store in the list. From the list, the records will be displayed into the screen. So this is the option here. The concept is this one. So once the query is executed, we already have that uh, this is the query that we can able to return the HQL point of view. So this means select star from student. So the query will be executed, the result will be stored in the query object. And now it is the query object is assigned to the list. So now the list will contain the number of records which are fetched, fetched from the table student, okay? Now we are displaying the data from the object. So what do we have in the list object now? The list object contains the information about the table. From the table, we are displaying the each person's ID and also the each person's name, okay? In the same way, the second item also, this is about the where class, for particular, if you want to get the particular record of the employee. And the same way, next is the third one, is about to search for a, if you want to update a record, if you want to update one record, if you want to, first you have to provide the record ID, the person ID, student ID name. When you provide the student ID and give the new name, 
the student with the pick up the record from the student ID is a specific ID and the name will be updated. So here I gave me some input. So what are the input I'm giving for the N value? It will search for the record. If the specific record is available. The name will be updated with the given name. So what are the name I will input that will be updated. So in the same way, the third or fourth option is about same method. So first I pass a parameter. So with the parameter, it will identify the record from the table. The record is available. It will be deleted. It will delete it from that table. So likewise, the fifth option is about the concept of order by. So we already have the concept of order by in the SQL, where you can able to order the data in the ascending or descending order. So here I'm using the data order in the descending order. So SID descending order means so all the SIDs are reverse displayed in the reverse order. Okay. So in the same way, the sixth option is about the aggregate function, like sum or max minimum. So if you here in my example, I'm asking for the maximum SID. What is the maximum SID means? What are the largest number? What are the largest SID number? For example, the SID are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What are the large number? 6. So I will execute the program and I will show how it will execute. See, now we get a menu. So if I plus one, what will happen? It will display the list of records from the table. See, all the records that are available in the table. So if I execute once again, and if I ask the option two, it will ask for the specific record. So now I have to specify the, given the record number. Let us suppose I give the record number five. It will display the information about the C. The record number five is Kiran. His name is Kiran. We execute the same query again. And now the third way is to update the record. So now here I'm typing the T. So then I'm asking for the ID to such a record. So I will give the ID as a four. And the name is a Sanjay. So what are the record with the name? ID four will be name is updated with a new name called Sanjay. So we'll get a message that so it means that here see we get an option that the employee is updated is one person. So mean the name student student updated studies is one. So it means one student is updated because we already aware that every student has a unique ID. So SID will not be repeated. So we'll have only one ID with the same name. That's why only one record will be updated. And again I am executing this one. Now this time I'm trying to delete the record. See, I'm asking the option that is the delete option four one. Now it's asking for the record number. I will give five. So I got the information that one record is deleted. So now if you want to check whether the record is being deleted or not, the ID number is here. We are given it the number is four, but the number five. Okay, remember that number. So pick here the option one to list the elements. So now see, okay. This way you can able to remove the number of records from the tables. Okay. You take the number of records. See here the record number five is nothing but in the point you have to take the point of the index number. So record number index means number with the sixth record. So see here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the sixth number is delete, deleted from the table. Okay. Where well, the record number means nothing but the record number means not the ID number. Here you have the record number. Okay. So if I execute again, we go for another option. I'll go with the option 5. It will help us to group the record C. You can able to get the records in the descending order of the IDs, their IDs. So because the query is about the descending order of the IDs. Now next one, the last option is the sixth one, which is equal to find the maximum number. So 
check here. The maximum number is 14 because when you see the employees record here, the last ID is the 14 number. Okay. So this is about the program, about the different queries that we've been able to write in the HQL main menu. You must remember one thing more. So when you click on this one, you the directory must be in the same pattern here. So first it should be the project name, next source, package name, under the package SQL main menu, next one student class and the student mapping class. Under the source, you must have the hybrid configuration file. Under the reference libraries, you must have the all this one. Okay. If you understand, hope you understand clearly. I will share the video for you.